On Thursday 4th of May, the Court of Appeal handed down judgment in the case of Unicredit Bank AG and Euronav NV, which is likely to be of interest to ship owners, cargo interests and financing banks. The essential question for the court was whether a ship owner, Euronav, was liable to the bill of lading holder, Unicredit, for delivering a cargo of low sulphur fuel oil from the vessel, the Siena, without production of the bill of lading. The facts were as follows. The Siena was voyage chartered by BP from Euronav on the BP VOI-5 form, which required the ship owner to discharge the cargo without production of the bill of lading if required to do so by the chartering. Euronav issued a bill of lading with BP named as shipper. The bill of lading stipulated that delivery was to be made to the order of BP. BP had agreed to sell the cargo to Gulf Petrochem. Gulf's purchase was financed by a letter of credit issued by Unicredit, pursuant to various trade finance facilities. Following the sale of the cargo, BP, Gulf and Euronav entered into a novation agreement by which Gulf became the voyage charterer in place of BP. The agreement made no provision in respect of the bill of lading. It did, however, add an additional discharge port, namely ship-to-ship -ship transfer at Sohar, Oman. Prior to discharge, Gulf had, at Unicredit's request, asked BP to endorse the bill of lading and send it to Unicredit. Due to COVID restrictions, that had not happened by the time of discharge. Rather, BP remained in possession of the bill of lading. Gulf instructed Euronav to discharge the cargo by STS transfer to two vessels at Sohar, which Euronav duly did at the end of April, early May 2020, without the bill being produced. Unicredit was not repaid by Gulf the sum which it had financed. It also appeared that Gulf or its employees had perpetrated a fraud against Unicredit and indeed other trade financing banks in respect of other cargoes. In August 2020, BP sent Unicredit the bill of lading endorsed to it, and then Unicredit brought a claim against Euronav, alleging a breach of contract contained in or evidenced by the bill of lading by reason of the delivery of the cargo without production of the bill of lading. The trial of Unicredit's claim came before Mrs Justice Mulder in the Commercial Court in March 2022. She dismissed Unicredit's claim on two bases. The first was that at the time it was issued, the bill of lading was a mere receipt because the shipper and the voyage charterer were the same party, namely BP. She rejected the argument that when BP ceased to be the voyage charterer by virtue of the innovation agreement, a contract came into existence at that stage. She held that there was no reason to conclude that Euronav and BP intended that the bill of lading should regulate their relationship in the event that their existing contractual relationship under the charter party was dissolved by the innovation. Accordingly, at the time of discharge, Euronav's contractual obligations were set out exclusively in the charter party, namely to discharge without production of the bill of lading if ordered to do so by the voyage charterer. Therefore, there was no breach of contract. Secondly, Mrs Justice Mulder held that even had there been a bill of lading contract, which had been breach, such breach caused no loss or the same loss would have been suffered by Unicredit in any event. Unicredit appealed to the Court of Appeal against each of those two findings. As to the first finding, Unicredit's challenge to Mrs Justice Mulder's judgment succeeded. Lord Justice Popperwell, giving the judgment of the Court, identified the relevant question to be answered as follows. What was the presumed intention of the parties at the time that the Bill of Lading was issued? In the context of a Bill of Lading issued to a charterer, the presumed intention was that the Bill would not be a contract only as long as the shipper and the charterer remained the same entity. He further held that there was no term of the Novation Agreement which displaced this presumption. The Court therefore ruled that at the time of discharge there was a Bill of Lading contract which was breached by Euronav discharging without production of the Bill. Lord Justice Popperwell also held that even if that analysis was wrong, Euronav was still in breach of contract. That was because the effect of Section 2.1 of the Carriage of Goods by Sea Act 1992 was that upon endorsement of the Bill of Lading to Unicredit in August 2020, a contract on the terms of the Bill of Lading came into existence retrospectively. It was therefore necessary for the Court to consider whether Mrs Justice Mulder's decision on causation was erroneous. The Court held that it was not. 
The court ruled that it would have been insufficient to conclude that the breach caused the loss simply because, in the absence of breach, the cargo would have initially remained on board the vessel. Rather, it was necessary to ask what would have happened next in the counterfactual scenario, or, as Lord Justice Popwell put it, what would have happened to the bank's security interest had owners initially refused to discharge without production of the bill? The Court of Appeal held that the judge had asked herself that question and had made factual findings that had Euronab initially refused to discharge the cargo without production of the bill of lading, it would then have sought instructions from Unicredit as to what should be done with the cargo and that Unicredit would have instructed Euronab to discharge without the bill being produced. Since the obligation to deliver against a bill of lading is a contractual one, which can be varied by express consent, the court held that delivery in those circumstances would not have been a breach of the bill of lading contract and would have caused no loss. The appeal was accordingly dismissed.